Hey guys, Desloader Magic here, and March of the Machine is about to release. Of course, uh, with their new rules, you can just sell stuff whenever it comes in. So in theory, they could have 100 boxes sitting there at the pre-release, and you guys already bought some. Or you're like me and you're boycotting them, but that, or getting packs for free for participating in something, or, you know, an F&M promo, or... Whatever, if you get your hands on these packs, you might want to know what the money cards are. So that's where we're going to cover the top 10 most valuable. And boy, the top end is spicy this time. But I will warn you that single sellers selling these as pre-releases have been a little optimistic before release. To be very polite. More like, realistically, the game is burning and they know it. So they're trying to get their money and run out the door. You know, they're grabbing all the silverware off the Titanic as it goes down and try to pre-release cards at prices that aren't usually normal for a standard set, especially when there's the, the variants and stuff and we're only covering the normal versions of the cards. So don't go out and say, oh, that's expensive, but I need that card. Wait a week after release. I can almost guarantee that all of these will fall. Also, there's a little bonus thing I'm going to reveal at the end of this that uh, flips it on its head. So first up in the expensiveometer, we've got 11 bucks on Invasion of New Phyrexia. It creates knights, it does cool stuff, it's the new, you know battle type so of course people want it because it's a new cool thing it makes sense but yeah 11 bucks is a mythic i could see it but remember that's 10th place ninth place we've got thalia and the gitrog monster for 12 bucks i mean yeah first strike death touch four drop four four play an additional land on your turns this just screams commander come on oh then sack a creature or land on swing and draw a card you kidding me very powerful card right there, so it makes sense. Then we got Vorinclex, traditionally an overpowered guy on cards. He's coming in at 14 bucks. Uh, by the way, all three of these are mythics. Yeah, Trample, Reach, and Search for Forests. I mean, duh. Plus he's a 6-6 six, six for 5, and his flip side is ridiculous. I mean, go look at the spoilers of the card. This is just the price video, but it's outrageous. If you ask me, 14's low for this. Then we got Invasion of Tarkir. This one took me by surprise. It is a mythic and it didn't look that good. But reveal any number of dragons? People online are talking about there must be a way to summon like a whole bunch of dragons with this. And uh, there does appear to be. And you could drop this in for two. So I, I think they made a little bit of a mistake. But not in standard. It appears people are talking about other formats. So this might be banned in other formats. But right now it's sitting at a $15 card. And that is not in any way surprising. Then we've got Jin Gitaxius. He now identifies as Jenny. I assume in the lore. I don't know. I didn't read it. He's also 15 bucks, so there's a lot of ties here. But uh, yeah, whenever you cast a spell three or greater, draw a card. Infinite card draw engine. Even for five, that's pretty good. There, there are decks that use him. His flip side saga is utterly ridiculous. Complete and utter atrocity and slap in the face to the game. That might have been where most of the 15 bucks is. But really on both sides, he's pretty good. And then, well, shocker, next up we got Sheldred at 18 bucks. This is another one where on the backside, utter, utter ridiculousness. Completely overpowered, but I'm more worried about it in standard. Now above that, for 20 bucks, we got the Sword of Once and Future. I mean, it doesn't strike me as all that good. It's a sword. Oh boy, those are expensive, but like, so? Pro black, pro blue. Okay. Hard to blow it up, but I mean, if we're talking internal formats, because this thing is not very useful in standard. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not like, it's not 20 bucks. You can grant stuff hexproof and indestructible, and I mean, Godsend is just a better card than this. The Surveil too, but you have to actually hit them. Uh, I mean, it's a sorcery, okay, but would this really fit in like an Is It Storm deck? Not really. Uh, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't see it. I, I just do not see any kind of $20 in this card, which means it's probably already fitting in one obscure net deck. So uh, next up, number three spot, we got Elish Norn. I didn't think she was that great. I mean, you flip her over, she's nuts. Absolutely insane. But I guess people are forgetting that you have to actually flip her over. But it's like, okay, you drop her in for four, you pay three, sack three other creatures, and then flip her? Okay, not completely not doable. Not the easiest thing in the world, but then, yeah, incubate two, five times? Come on. Like, that's that's the start of it. I'm not going to get into what the card does, but, like, yeah, 28 bucks. I don't think that this is that much better than Sheldred. I think it's just main character pricing, and I think that's going to fall. But Mono White is very competitive right now, so we might be looking at, like, the standard, you know, I want this card premium. Who knows? All I'm looking at is we're four days out and they ain't sold out. Just saying. Next up, Ren and Realm Breaker, of course. Uh, this card's definitely a bit of a landfall generator, and it only costs three, so yeah. I think 28 bucks is about right. I think the demand's going to fall off. So if you want this for another deck, just wait a month. I mean, geez. 
And I mean, he just does so many things in so many pre-existing decks. It works with some cards that were reprinted recently. Yeah. I don't think he's worth 28, but I, this is at least a $15 card, like all day, every day. And finally, the number one spot, you probably guessed it, it's Urabrask. It's almost like they went a little too powerful with these flippy Saga Boys. Somebody really likes Praetors over at Watsi. I didn't really think this is a very good card. I think I when I read it, I thought a $5 card. I, I don't see it, but it must slot into something. It's not cheap enough for a traditional Red Winds deck that I've ever seen, or any kind of burn deck, or I, I don't know. Maybe one with Treasure Ramp, is that a thing? I haven't really kept up with, like, Modern and stuff. But he is definitely a Spell Spam Assistant. He is definitely a, 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 a Storm Assistant. But Storm tends to be faster than this thing dropping in for four. Like, he's way too late to help you, so... I don't get it. I don't know. Must be in something. But I do not see 30 bucks there. Just like in this entire top 10, I don't see a single rare. Uh-oh. That's not a good sign. So, I went and looked at the, the rares, and it got very mixed up and muddled with the different, like, variants and the, you know, special trims and whatever. But, uh, basically, City on Fire is number one, if you just count normal cards, and that's only 10 bucks. And, yeah, that card's nutty. After that, it appears to be Fairy Mastermind, 750. And of course, they put some guy who won some tournament's face on it, so that's, that's probably where that is. It's not that good of a card. Then we got the Serac and Goreclaw team up, uh, team up card for seven bucks. Tribute to the World Treat for seven bucks. Etali for seven, which that card's nuts. Um, Invasion of Ikoria is seven bucks. But then we drop down to $4.50 for that Chrome Host Seed Shark, the new uh, Sharknado card. So just to give you like an overview, you might think, oh, well, if it's four something a pack, a couple rares above four is good. No, you need a bunch of rares above four and preferably at 15 to 20 bucks if you really want to make money opening these in mass. You can't cut on the mythics. I think they contribute to like 19% the price of a box or something like that. And those are going to fall quick. They're high, but they're not like that high. And I think there's five bum mythics too. So overall, I didn't do the math, but just kind of scrolling through after I've done, God, probably 50 sets worth of EV calculations, I would say that this day one is going to be pretty close to negative, as in if you opened a box day one and sold the cards as quick as you possibly can for the best possible price, you're very likely to break even or, or lose money. That is not good. Now, I think part of that is because of the collector's boosters and the variants and all that stuff, but wow, I haven't seen rares this low in quite some time. Now, the good news is, if you're not playing standard, you don't, you know, quote-unquote, need these to play the game and to go to F&M, well, then you can just wait for them to drop, or if you don't need the mythics, you just need the rares, they're already cheap, so you can just order them right now before supplies uh, run out, because yeah, that, that is possible. I think they're underprinting this like crazy. Who knows how many of these are sitting in a landfill? I mean, if you think companies don't undership to load up prices and make their uh, products look more popular, then, well, you're wrong. NVIDIA is doing it right now, right in front of people's faces, and regulators aren't doing nothing. So that's why you can't buy a graphics card for a reasonable price. It's because they're greedy, manipulative, monopoly-abusing jackasses. Now, nobody at Watsy or Hasbro would sink that low, except they would, and they have, actually, in the past, provably. Undership, destroyed, manipulated inventory, that kind of stuff to make it look like something sold out. I guess I'll add allegedly because they didn't come out and admit it, but we have incontrovertible evidence. So, okay, believe whatever you want to believe. But yeah, I think with every set, especially one this overpowered, this obnoxious, and this disruptive to standard, are people going to be buying this in paper to play standard? No. So the number of active standard players is going down with every set release. But I think this is going to leapfrog it like two or three generations ahead because nobody wants to play with these cards. So if you need them... I think they're going to crash pretty quick. So I think these prices are being set as if demand was normal and not falling with every set. Or like I said, they're just being very quote unquote optimistic because they want to make the highest margin possible on pre-orders. But a grand total of dead ass none of these are sold out on the website I'm looking at, which is a pretty big single seller. Like it says eight available, eight available, eight available. It would say zero available if they already sold past the amount that they think they're going to open. So maybe with like the product ordering thing or the, the order of the products arriving when they're allowed to open them and process them, like maybe that's a thing. But I've seen a lot of sets even boy up to a year ago where they, they would sell out of certain cards and they'd wait to see if they could get more or open more or more came in on buy list before they sold more. And I'm not seeing that with this set. That's another red flag. So to me, way too many red flags say, don't buy this, don't open it, it's bad value. So hey, less for you to spend money on. So if you appreciate the good intel and the good info, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.